Hello, everyone. When we finished telling you about the incredible tour of the City of Heaven that I had, this literal virtual reality tour, where I was shown so much, the beautiful buildings, the compassion of God with the nursery. Um, little did I know at that point that I was slowly but surely approaching the most magnificent part of this incredible journey. And as I <clears throat> suddenly was brought back down with the angel to the ground of heaven, I was looking around and trying to, in my amazement of what I had just seen, comprehend everything. When I realized that I had not seen the tall warrior angel in quite a while. And so I looked for him. And I turned and I noticed for the first time a slight rise in the ground that went no more than probably 30, 40 feet away from me, just a gentle slope. And as I looked, I saw the tall angel. And he was bent very low. in reverence to a figure that I had not seen before. And this figure facing the angel was in profile to me. I could not see the face. We've all driven down a paved road on a summer's day, and you see the shimmer rise from the heat of the asphalt or the pavement before your car. The face of this figure was covered with that kind of a shimmer. And I was intrigued, but not only because of the shimmer, because as beautiful and magnificent as the angels were, as magnificent as they were, this figure facing the tall angel was even more regal, more beautiful, more magnificent. And it was different. As beautiful as the light of the angels were, there was a light that flowed off this tall, regal figure as though it were cascading out of him like a fountain. And it was a golden light that came off him and flowed down all sides of him. And it behaved like liquid light. It flowed like golden water. And as I watched in amazement, this golden liquid light flowed down the slope toward me. And I noticed that as it flowed down the slope, whenever it contacted the flowers and the grass that were already beautiful and in bloom, when that golden liquid light flowed over them, they bloomed even higher and more magnificently than ever before. I was so taken with this incredible being that I stumbled over to the path. And as I watched this incredible liquid light come flowing down toward me, I watched in fascination as it pooled around my feet. And as it did, my whole being was filled with the realization that this majestic regal figure that I was looking at was none other than Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Someone who I had thought was just simply a Jewish legend. And here I am looking at him, looking at him in all his magnificence and the golden liquid love that flowed from him and pooled around me changed me forever. It truly did. And I was in awe of what I was seeing and feeling. And I dropped to my knees into that pool of golden liquid love. And suddenly two angels were beside me and lifted me up. And as I stared at, 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 at the figure of Jesus, the shimmer vanished from his face. And then I beheld 
that beautiful face in profile in all its magnificence. And as he stared down at the angel who was bent facing him, the angel reached into his cloak and brought out this little slim book, no bigger than a small menu in a roadside diner. And he opened it and presented it for Jesus to read. And I had this most overwhelming feeling of shame and degradation because I realized that what the angel had presented to Jesus was the book of my life, the book of my life. And instead of a book filled as thick as a Bible with all the good deeds that I could have done with the many resources that I had, all I had to show for a life that I thought was successful was the slim, meager little book. I was overwhelmed with sorrow and shame. This was all I had to show for the life that I had lived. And now I pray every day, every day, and I do the best I can every day so that if I am ever permitted to go back, this time when the angel takes the book of my life for Jesus to read, Jesus will need three angels and a forklift to lift it up. That's how committed I am to living a life that honors Christ and God the Father. And, uh, but at that moment, I was overwhelmed. And as the angel presented the book for Jesus to read, as Jesus read, it was as though all these images flipped off the pages and went through my mind. I saw myself as a child in my mother's arms. I saw myself playing in the snow with my brother. I saw myself in various stages of my life, becoming a young pilot, becoming, becoming older. And, and not only did I see some of the good things I did, but I saw the transgressions I had, I had done. I saw the sins that I had committed. But the most amazing thing of all, because I was ruthless in business, I had to win at any cost, and I hurt people. And I had this feeling so intense that not only did I see the sins and the transgressions that I had committed, but I felt the pain that I had caused, that I had created for the people that I had hurt. Not only was the sin visible, the pain that I caused them became my pain. And I was overwhelmed with grief and sadness at the amount of hurt and pain that I had caused in my life. I had no idea, no idea. I felt their pain. It became my pain. And I was overwhelmed by the grief and the sadness I had created during my time on earth. I remember falling back down to my knees and weeping for the life that I had lived. It didn't take long for Jesus to read that slim little book. He straightened up. The angel folded the book, put it back in his robe, and vanished. And as I looked in breathless wonder, this magnificent figure of Jesus turned toward me. And suddenly I found myself face to face with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no words, no words to describe transpired between us in the full enormity of the minute. But as our eyes locked, I suddenly felt as though I was drawn into those incredible eyes of gray and green and blue.
And in those eyes, I saw eternity. I saw sorrow for the way that I had lived my life. I saw sorrow for the way mankind has rejected his father's message. But I also saw something magnificent and wonderful. I saw incredible love for me, for me, one single speck in the cosmos of God's creation. The love was undeniable. It was unremitting. And it was such an incredible, intense, personal moment. I had this strange feeling as our eyes locked on each other that he loved me so much that, that forever forward, whatever would happen to me, I was irrevocably changed and I was forever his. Because behind that love in his eyes, I saw forgiveness, forgiveness for me. Jesus covered me with the blood of his forgiveness. And I felt sad and alive and elated all at once. I want you to pay attention to this because all of you, all of you that honor God, that love him and try to live a life of goodness and kindness will look into those eyes one day and see what I saw. This incredible love for me, for us. And I had the strangest feeling that although my intellect told me that he had created billions in that split second, I felt as though I was the only one he had ever created. My intellect knew better, but my spirit told me different. And there was this amazing connection between us. This majestic regal face. His hair wasn't long as I would have expected. Uh, it, it curled over his collar. These amazing eyes, the most regal, noble features very olive skinned, a smile that's impossible to describe, a smile full of love and compassion and hope. And yet, and I enjoy telling people this, in those eyes, I also saw humor. I saw this is a Jesus that wants us to laugh. He wants us to be happy. When you're there, you have fought the good fight. You have run the race. And now it is time for joy. I actually asked the angels before this, what is joy? And they described joy this way. They said, on earth, when someone tells you something truly humorous, in that split second as you are about to erupt in laughter, imagine that moment expanded timelessly in heaven. That is joy. And so as I'm staring at the eyes of Jesus, this was what I felt. The joy of endless love, of endless, endless forgiveness, of total acceptance. I didn't have to pretend to be anyone else. I was his. My spirit had come home to him and he was welcoming it. Through my tears, I, I was overwhelmed by the depth of the feeling that I had. And I suppose the remains of the feeling that I had denied him all my life. And yet here I was before him a place where all of you, if you honor him, will be. And when you look into his eyes, you will see what I saw. This unremitting, totally committed love for you and his appreciation for a life lived in honor of his father. And as I said, this is what I try to do now with every day of my life, to be as good a man as I can be. For a selfish reason, I want to go back so badly. You have no idea. 
I can't wait to go back. I mean, I love my life now. I love my wife. I love my family. But look, you cannot experience heaven and not yearn for it. I realize that I can't precipitate that, so I'm content to try to do what God wants me to do, what Jesus would like me to do, but I am ready at any time. And I think he knows that. But as I gazed into those eyes, I felt I had to get closer. That, that golden liquid love that I spoke of seven minutes ago, that is so intrinsic. It, I had to have more of it. And so I started to crawl toward him up that slight rise. And as I did, he held it, he had his right hand over his left. And as he smiled at me, he moved his hand this way. And I, mistakenly so, thought it was, he was beckoning me forward. So I started to move faster up the slope toward him. But suddenly he raised his hand in a definite command to stop, to halt. And my whole being just dropped because I just felt I had to get as close to him as I could be. And I'm persistent. I tried to crawl even closer. And this time his hand raised even higher in an unmistakable command to halt. And although he was I felt his love, it was clear that he was denying me the ability to come any closer. And as he raised his hand, I saw the most incredible thing. As he raised his hand, the hem of his sleeve slipped back on his robe. And there, through the hole in his wrist, I could see the shining light of his body. And the, when I saw this, this jagged wound in his wrist, the remains of the crucifixion. I was filled with such remorse, such shame, that my discretion had hurt him so much. God sent his only son to teach us love and forgiveness and how to be kind. And we murdered him in the most hideous way possible. And when I saw that mark in his wrist through which the golden glow of his body show, shone, shone through. I, I, it was as though I had held the hammer and driven the nails. It was that personal a moment. And I once again began to cry for what we as mankind and what I had done to him. Never, ever will I forget that terrible wound in his body. As I looked through my tears, Jesus smiled at me and instantly I calmed. And then I realized Jesus was about to speak to me, to me. Remember earlier I said that when the angel spoke to me, it was as though it was thought transference. But when Jesus spoke to me, it was like me speaking to you. His lips moved, his eyes interacted with mine, his facial expressions were kind. But clearly he was stopping me from coming forward. And then as I waited with on boundless excitement, fear, trepidation, <laughs> bordering on ecstasy to hear his voice. This is what Jesus said to me and what he wants me to tell you. These are the words of the living Christ. with his hand raised, forbidding me to come any closer. This is what Jesus Christ said to me. James, my son, 
this is not yet your time. Go back and tell your brothers and sisters of the wonders we have shown you. And then his hand, his right hand slowly came down and rested on his left. And suddenly the full enormity of his words fell on me that I was being denied not only access, but I was being sent back to earth, back and away from this land of peace and love and endless beauty. And I began to cry. I began to plead. I began to beg, please, Jesus, don't send me back. Please don't send me back. This is what I've yearned for all my life. I have yearned for this. I just didn't know it was you. Please let me stay, please. I won't be any trouble. I actually said that. It's pathetic, but I was desperate. But suddenly there are two angels beside me. They lift me up, turn me around and start walking me down, rushing me down the path. And I fought against them. It was useless. They were angels. But I fought I, in my I, I just felt if I could just turn around and plead my case once more that I maybe could convince him to let me stay. And finally, I struggled and pulled my arm away and looked back over my shoulder to plead one more time to let me stay. And I looked back and Jesus was gone. But instead, standing exactly in the place where Jesus has stood, had stood, was the tall angel in all his gigantic beauty, 15 feet tall. And yet I could sense from him that he felt sad for me as I glimpsed into those beautiful violet eyes. He had his head slightly turned on one side as he stared at me. And then for the last time, I heard the angel's voice through the process of thought transference. And I heard the angel say in that beautiful, melodic, deep voice, I'm sorry, James, but you have to go. And then he did something I shall never forget. He seemed to grow in stature and magnificent, magnificence. 15 feet tall, and suddenly he expanded those enormous wings, 12 feet on either side, 24 foot wingspan, 15 foot tall, and he began to glow with a golden glow, as if clothed in immense power and dignity. But clearly what he was saying to me was, the way forward for me at this time was closed. Suddenly, the angels took hold of me strongly, and suddenly I'm back in a tunnel. But it's not the beautiful tunnel that I came to heaven in. It's dark, it's dingy. There's a faint light at the end of it, and I'm beginning to feel cold and wet and, 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 and despair and, and pain. And hearing my voice, my name called, and my face hurting, and suddenly I pop out of this tunnel and I'm back in my body and I'm convulsing on the table and I'm back. And it was as though I had put back on a heavy, wet, cold overcoat. And I'm back. And I've been intubated. I found out later, of course, from my wife and from the nurses what had happened but they were absolutely stunned that I was back. There was no medical explanation. I had been brain dead clinically. There was no hope of my recovery. My wife had convinced them to keep me on a respirator so our children could come back and say goodbye. And then I would have been unplugged or disconnected 
for someone to have been clinically brain dead for that long is just unheard of. And as I struggle to acclimate to the coldness of this world, to the pain again, but the amazing thing was as they ran and got my wife in, in the quiet room, and I was struggling to speak around the tubes that were in me. And as they finally st stabilized me and took the tubes from me, the, my voice box, uh, my, my voice was very gravelly, and suddenly Lorraine had her arms around me. And of all the things that I could have told her, <laughs> about my journey to heaven. I stared into her pretty face and I struggled, but I finally said, I saw Jesus and Jesus has horses. <laughs> Jesus has horses. And so I'm back. And in a short while, I'll, I'll tell you, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story but I am so grateful to God for the experience, for the, the, the beauty of being immersed in his love. And I pray that this will be a blessing to you as well. Thank you. Have you ever wondered what heaven is truly like? Do you know someone who questions life after death? Now you can know the testimonies of people who experienced life after death. You will receive James D. Woodford's brand new powerful book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his firsthand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell. And the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. Read and hear first-hand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. You can get a digital copy of James Woodford's book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, by clicking the link below or by going to sidroth.org slash heaven.